So a lot of you guys have been asking for this video and here it is without further ado. Today what we're going to be talking about is what are underbites and how are they treated? Let's go. What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. I hope you guys have all been doing awesome and are excited for today's episode. If you are new to this channel, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more content like this. And don't forget to click the thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. What I want to talk about today is what underbites are and how they're treated. Now, underbites are treated in a very case-dependent manner, meaning that what fits for one person might not fit another person. But today what we're going to be talking about are the three most common ways that we treat underbites as orthodontists. Before we dive into today's episode, I kind of want to touch base on something I've been toying around with. I've been thinking about doing some YouTube lives, and I was curious if that's something you guys would be interested in. What I need to know from you guys though is one, if you're interested in this, and two, I gotta find some times that will work so that everyone can get the most benefit out of this. So let me know in the comments of today's video of some YouTube live ideas that you guys might have, and two, I need to know what time works best for everyone. So I'm gonna put a poll on the Braces Club group. If you guys are members of that, go ahead and vote on there. And if you're not members yet, please check it out. I'm gonna put a link in the corner here, as well as in the description of today's video. What the Braces Club is, is basically a huge online community where we're having people discuss their journeys, have questions answered, things like that. So check it out if you have not yet. Okay, so let's dive into the crux of today's video, which are the three ways that orthodontists treat underbites. So before we get started, let's go ahead and discuss what an underbite is. An underbite is when your upper teeth sit back compared to your lower teeth. As we've discussed in previous videos, ideally your upper teeth should be just outside of your lower teeth all the way across the arch. In the case of an underbite, the upper teeth are sitting behind your lower teeth and this can range in severity. It can be as minor as just edge to edge like this and really severe in certain cases like this. An underbite can be caused by a few things. It can be caused by an underdeveloped upper jaw, an overdeveloped lower jaw, a combination of the two, and although most underbites are skeletal, sometimes what they can also be is this thing called a functional underbite, which means that your teeth are hitting edge to edge, and it's uncomfortable, so you posture forward, which makes it look like you have an underbite, whereas skeletally, it's not really a problem, it's just a dental shift. Let me explain that a little bit more on the models. An edge to edge bite, or a pseudo class three, is when your upper and lower teeth are hitting just on the front teeth, and that's really uncomfortable because it can cause a lot of chipping of those front teeth. So without even thinking about it, we posture forward like this. And those aren't caused by an actual skeletal problem, those are just caused by a shift. It's called a functional shift, whereas you hit and you shift forward. And those are resolved by just aligning the teeth and getting those upper teeth to be a little bit more forward than your lower teeth so we can achieve an appropriate couple so that you don't continue to do that shift. So I'm gonna classify the underbites into basically three main categories a minor, moderate, and severe. If you have a minor underbite, these can generally be treated with a little bit of interproximal reduction and elastics. I've discussed in previous videos what IPR and elastics are, so I'm gonna link those out in the description of today's video if that's something you wanna learn more about. But briefly, what we can do is slenderize the lower teeth and use elastics to bring the lower teeth back and the upper teeth forward to correct this crossbite. This can work in minor cases because if it's a more severe case, you can't use elastics to correct that much of an underbite. But in a lot of minor edge to edge cases or small underbites, these can work out well. The second way orthodontists can treat underbites are with extractions. If you have a moderate underbite, this means that you do have some sort of a skeletal component whereas your upper jaw is either too far back or your lower jaw is too far developed forward. By using extractions, orthodontists can camouflage what the skeletal discrepancy is and actually make your teeth look as though you don't have an underbite. By using camouflage, your orthodontist can basically camouflage the skeletal problem dentally. So although you would appear to have an underbite if you just looked at the skeleton, with the teeth we can make it look as though you don't have that discrepancy. The way this is done is by using extractions. By extracting teeth, usually on the lower arch, but sometimes also in the upper arch, your orthodontist can bring your lower teeth back and resolve that underbite. So basically lean the lower teeth backwards so that your upper teeth are in front of your lower teeth, resulting in a functional, healthy, and stable bite. Again, this is not always the way to treat an underbite. Sometimes IPR will be enough, and sometimes we have to go to option number three. The way that orthodontists can treat severe underbites is actually in conjunction with oral surgeons, and this is called orthognathic surgery. I am gonna do a separate video totally addressing this because this is quite a bit of a topic, but orthognathic surgery is when your orthodontist works with an oral surgeon and basically puts the teeth in the correct spot within the upper and lower arch individually, and basically we go to surgery 
to move either the upper jaw forward or the lower jaw backwards. These surgeries cause amazing changes in a person's life because basically what they can do is change their entire facial appearance and make it so that that upper jaw that might have been too far back is brought forward or like I've said before, the lower jaw that's too overgrown can be brought backwards. This not only puts the teeth in the ideal position within the bone, but puts the bones in their ideal position to achieve that ideal bite and stable bite. But there are a lot of things that go into jaw surgery. So I kind of want to address that in a whole separate video, which if you're interested in, let me know in the comments of today's video if that is something you're interested in. I think that that will be coming up within the next few episodes, but let me know if that's something you want me to do. And that is the three main ways that orthodontists can correct underbites. Now, this isn't every single case. Like I said, it's very case dependent. Sometimes you'll need extractions along with the jaw surgery, or sometimes you'll just need extractions, or sometimes you'll need IPR, or just elastics. It's very, very case dependent, but I kind of want to introduce to you guys some of the ways that orthodontists do this. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more content like this. And don't forget, if you guys are interested in me doing those YouTube lives, please be sure to let me know in the comments, as well as some dates and times that work on the Braces Club Facebook group, so that we can schedule something, and I'll let you guys know and announce it on the Braces Club. So please be sure to stay up to date on there because it's a little bit difficult to do it on YouTube. As always, I hope you guys stay healthy, happy, and safe, and be sure to keep smiling. I will catch you guys next time on Braces Explained. For now, Dr. Greg, out.